Bobby's Apple by Tara Satan Fergu. Albie's Apple. Mrs. Johnson. Albie Dog Buster. To my biggest fan. Once upon a time, way out in the country, there lived a boy named Albie. Albie liked to help on the farm, play catch with his dog Buster, and pull his red wagon along the country roads. Whatever it was that Albie was doing, he could never resist an apple. He liked all kinds of apples. In fact, there was no type of apple that Albie did not like. Red Delicious, Granny Smith, Golden Delicious, and Pink Lady. And Albie liked anything made of apples. Candied apples, apple cider, and especially apple pie. One day while Albie was out exploring, he came across Mrs. Johnson's apple orchard, where a huge apple tree stood. Albie could not believe his eyes. There before him was the most perfectly shaped, beautifully shiny apple. I'll bet it tastes as good as it looks, thought Albie, his mouth watering. Albie knew the apple did not belong to him and that he should just keep walking. But instead, though, he started to think reasons why he should eat the apple. Apples are supposed to be eaten. It would be such a shame for this apple not to be eaten. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. With that, Albie simply could not resist. He plucked that apple right off Mrs. Johnson's tree and took a great big bite. Oh! Just as he thought, it was the crispiest, juiciest, sweetest apple he had ever tasted. When Albie finished the apple, he smacked his lips and went on his way. Mmm! The next week, Albie passed by the Johnson Orchard again, as he was remembering the apple he had enjoyed there. He spotted Mrs. Johnson sitting under her tree. She was crying. Why, Mrs. Johnson, Albie said, what's the matter? Oh, Albie, Mrs. Johnson sobbed. I'm sad because I won't be able to compete in the countywide grandest apple contest. My prize apple is missing from the tree. Albie started to feel cold all over. Well, um, maybe you can enter the contest with one of your other apples. These are fine apples, Albie, but they are the same ones that you can buy at the farmer's market. I don't think this old tree will ever grow another apple quite like that one, she sighed. <sighs> Back when I was a little girl, this tree was full of prize-winning apples. But over the years, there have been fewer and fewer of them. Albie could not stand it any longer. Oh, Mrs. Johnson, he blurted out. I ate your prize apple. I'm so sorry. Albie, sweetheart, Mrs. Johnson replied. You know that if you want something that doesn't belong to you, you should ask permission before you take it. I would have been happy to give you that apple after the contest. Mrs. Johnson, I'm so sorry. 
I promise never again to do something I know is wrong. I think you learned a valuable lesson, Albie. You are a good boy and accept your apology. All during the next week, Albie could not free his mind off the picture of Mrs. Johnson crying. He tried working on the farm, playing with Buster, and pulling his wagon along the country roads. But none of these made things any better. He just felt terrible about what he had done. Then Albie found a solution. He decided to shower Mrs. Johnson's apple tree with love, in the hope that it would grow another perfect apple. All winter, all spring, and all summer, he attended to the tree with great care. He watered it, raked up the dead blossoms that fell, and made sure the birds that nested in it were safe. Who's a pretty tree? Yes, you are. You are a pretty tree. Then one day that fall, as Abby passing the Johnson Orchard, he saw something unbelievable. There before him stood Mrs. Johnson's tree, covered with glorious apples, one nicer than the next. Abby ran to Mrs. Johnson's door with the news. Mrs. Johnson, Mrs. Johnson, it's a miracle, he shouted. The old woman smiled, for she had already seen all the splendid apple. It is not purely a miracle, Alby. My tree is vibrant once again because of the way you cared for it. That year, Mrs. Johnson won the blue ribbon in the annual Grandest Apple Contest. Later that fall, people from all around came to taste the wonderful apples from Mrs. Johnson's tree. And as long as Abby kept on showering the tree with love, it produced the shiniest, crispiest, tastiest apples in the county. The end. John, John. Done!